Um, so I'm not going to do all structures of the brain, but just kind of or general orientation. So remember that the brain has five basic regions, or what are called secondary brain vesicles. The most anterior one of them is the this is where you have to like look at more the the telencephalon or telencephalon, yes. And in the shark, the telencephalon is basically the olfactory bulbs, olfactory tract, and cerebral hemispheres. The olfactory bulb is hard to see here, but it's basically plastered up against the backside of the olfactory sac. So this is olfactory sac, and right here is olfactory bulb. And the olfactory nerve is little short fibers that run between the bulb and the uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the sac and the bulb. So you'll never actually see an olfactory nerve as a separate nerve. If I wanted to ask you about it, I would put a pin at that junction between bulb and sac and say, what nerve is found here? The thing that looks more like a nerve that you see running back to the brain here is the olfactory tract, which is running between the olfactory bulb and the cerebral hemisphere. So that's this thing right here. see this. I know it's a little bit of a, a small hole there, but it's this guy here. Um, and then these two big bulges right there are the cerebral hemispheres. So that would be these guys here. Can you see that at all? No. Okay. That's, you look, you could, really should say something because I see people looking kind of like, really? I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. And you could, you could speak up. It's all right. So here we go. These are the cerebral hemispheres. Okay. See those? Okay. In here? Okay. And so that's all telencephalon. Now, oh, did I break it? I broke your epiphysis, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what's back behind the, um, the telencephalon? Diencephalon. Diencephalon, exactly. And the diencephalon um, is kind of this trough-like area here between the cerebral hemispheres and the optic lobes. Okay. So right in here, between cerebral hemispheres and optic lobes. Okay. You guys see this? Here's cerebral hemispheres, there's optic lobes, and this area in the middle is the diencephalon. Can you see anything else, Shani? Well, I'm hoping for the phone. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Technology. It'd be nice if we had like a camera here that like projected or something. Let's see if I can talk to the powers that be. Um, the diencephalon, just conceptually, I always like to point this out, you have to think of it as being a roof or a ceiling, a floor, and then two side walls. And the ceiling or roof is the epithalamus, the floor is the hypothalamus, and the two side walls are the thalamus. And the space in the middle is the cavity which is the ventricle of the diencephalon, which is the third, third. third ventricle, exactly. Um, so the, what we're seeing looking down from above is the epithalamus, which includes the epiphysis, or that long, thin strand that runs forward that I just broke, um, that runs up to the, the roof, and that's basically the pineal eye of these guys. You can see a little bit of it left right there. And the roof of the... Um, diencephalon. And then off to either side of that, there's a thin membrane that's called the telechoroidea that covers over the third ventricle. There's the epiphysis running down the middle, and then off to either side is the telechoroidea. If I break through that telechoroidea, I'm into the third ventricle. Okay. And on either side would be the thalamus and the hypothalamus below. That's the diencephalon. Back by the diencephalon is the mesencephalon or midbrain. And in these guys, the main thing we see of the mesencephalon are the optic lobes. Okay, so these guys here. And they're called optic lobes because the information from the eyes comes in to that region of the brain. All right, and that's really about all we can see of midbrain from the dorsal view. Mesencephalon then comes metencephalon. And the main item or part of the metencephalon is this kind of football shaped thing, which is the cerebellum. The football shaped area is called the body of the cerebellum. Right 
here, and then on either side of it, there's these two little lobes or ears, and those are the oracles of the cerebellum. So here and here. These guys. Okay. And then, last but not least, back behind the cerebellum, in the metencephalon, we get into the myelencephalon, which is more or less the same as the thing as the medulla oblongata. And that's this whole region in here. From here to here, from here to here, from here to here. And there's a cavity in there that always kind of tears open. So you don't really find the roof over it. And that's the ventricle of the hindbrain of the myelencephalon and metencephalon, which we call the fourth oh, ventricle. So that's the fourth ventricle in there. And I have a little, here. a little bit of extra connective tissue, so I'm going to try to remove. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. That's very cool. That is the, the roof of the, of the ventricle that actually is rarely intact, and it was on this guy, and that's why I had to tear through it. Sorry, guys, but you'll appreciate it. What I want to show you is if you look down on the floor of the fourth ventricle here that I just opened up, you'll see two little ridges running along with a groove in the middle. Okay, And those are what are called the somatic motor columns. Can you see those? Okay. Those right here running along like this. Okay. And what that means is that there are motor neurons. You guys need to see it. It's right there. Um, that then are going to have their axons go out to muscles, skeletal muscles, cause them to move. If we move a little laterally from there, there's some grooves, and at the base there's another little ridge, and that's the visceral motor column, which is supplying um, muscle of the gut. Around a little further, we get to visceral sensory, bringing sensory information from the gut, and up at the very top, there's ridges that are the somatic sensory, bringing uh, sensory information in from the skin. And there's a, in the Walker um, lab manual, there's a little slice through the hindbrain showing that arrangement. And you should pay attention to it and, and learn it because that actually translates into the organization also of the spinal cord. When later in the course, when I get to the nervous system, we'll talk about that. It is nice to have actually seen it in a shark like for real. Okay. Um, all right. And that is pretty much all I wanted to show you on the brain. Good? Any questions? Then we get to cranial nerves. So let's just go th through them from front to back. Do I have any time left, by the way? Five minutes, perfect. Um, zero is the terminal nerve. And the terminal nerve actually can be seen on this shark. If you look in here, and maybe you won't be able to see this, but basically in the angle between the olfactory tract and the um, cerebral hemisphere, you'll see a little thin strand kind of cutting across that angle. You may not see it from way back there, but I'll just tell you, oh, if you see it there, it that is the terminal nerve. Okay, number zero. Number one is the olfactory. We talked about that already. What's number two? Optic. Okay, the optic is coming from the eye into the brain, and let's see, look at that on this one here for the moment. Um, Optic nerve is this one right here, coming straight in from eye to brain. Okay. And it just runs straight medial lateral. It doesn't go at any kind of an angle, unlike all the other things in the park. It's this one here. And where is the terminal? Terminal is on the other shark, so, oh, okay. but it's in this angle between the um, olfactory tract and the cerebral hemisphere. Um, that was optic. Oculomotor, number three, goes to four of the six eye muscles. And the easiest place to look for the oculomotor is to look on the underside of the ventral rectus. And you'll see a nerve running along in there. Is any luck? Right here. You see this nerve right here running along like that. There's a nerve. There we go. See it right there? Okay. 
That is the oculomotor nerve. Right here. Do you see that at all? No. Okay. Just let me know. It's right there. Can you see that at all now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the... Okay. You're sharp. This guy right here. Yeah, now can you see it? <coughs> Out through the phone? Okay. Good technology. <laughs> okay. Oculomotor nerve. All right. Um, number four, trochlear nerve goes to one eye muscle, and that is the dorsal oblique muscle. So if we find the dorsal oblique, which hopefully we can do, right there, and we look for a nerve going to it, there is a nerve, and that is the trochlear nerve. There. This one. Okay, and for you guys, I'll try to do this carefully so I don't rip it when it comes to showing you. Okay. All right, then we get to the trigeminal nerve. Number five, big one, okay. The trigeminal comes out of the brain, and I think let's look at it on the other chart. We'll see it a little bit better there. Splits up into four branches. The shark is pretty good for this. One runs right along the top of the orbit, and that's the superficial ophthalmic branch. And the superficial ophthalmic branch runs along here, has a lot of um, branches that run up through those foramina and um, runs out onto the snout. So that's this one right here. Okay. You guys, that's this. I think everyone yeah. probably got a good view of that in general anyway. That's this one here. Okay. Yeah, you see that? Okay. All right. Next branch is the deep ophthalmic branch, which is the one that ran across the back of the eyeball that I tried to get you not to destroy when you put the eyeball out. That's this little thin one here that runs just through the orbit and passes in forward into the nose region. Okay. That's this guy. Is that all? All right. Sort of? Okay. The third branch is the maxillary branch of the trigeminal. And the maxillary branch of the trigeminal passes along the floor of the orbit through this big nerve trunk, which is called the infraorbital trunk. So that's the infraorbital trunk, mm -hmm. and the maxillary branch of the trigeminal is running through it. Okay. You see this? Right. Oops. There we go. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right. It's right there. That's the and then finally, the last or fourth branch of the trigeminal is the mandibular branch, which runs out across the back wall of the orbit here to reach the jaw muscles and all the other muscles of the, high, of the mandibular arch. That's mandibular branch there. This one right here. See that? Right there. Yeah. Okay. You guys right here. And for you guys, it's this one right here. All right, that is the, uh, the trigeminal nerve. Nerve number six, the abducens nerve, is another eye muscle nerve, and it goes to the lateral rectus muscle. There is, it's really difficult to see that nerve going to the muscle because it, it goes right into the very base of the muscle. And if I were to ask you about it, what I would do is probably pin the muscle and say, what nerve supplies this muscle? So it's going to the lateral rectus, which is the muscle that abducts or turns the eye away from the midline, hence abducens nerve. <coughs> Number seven is the facial nerve. And the facial nerve comes out behind the um, trigeminal. And this is actually a really nice view of it here. You can see it, it's main branch coming out and it runs all the way around here behind the spiracle and down into the hyoid arch muscles. And just like the trigeminals, the nerve of the mandibular arch, the facials, the nerve of the hyoid arch. So there's that main hyomandibular branch running out here and along like this and down behind this curve. There is another tiny little branch of the facial that these guys forced me to find for them. So I'll show it to you here. It's a little branch right there running forward called the palatine branch of the facial. It's pretty neat. 
And these are not hard to find. You just kind of have to dig in there a little deeper than you may have done already. Can you see that at all? Maybe. Yeah, I get it. Okay. All right. That's number seven. Number eight is the auditory nerve. That one, um, generally, if you look on your shark, on the region where you remove the ear, you'll see little strands of nerves in that region that used to be connected to the inner ear. And that's auditory nerve. So there you can see some right there. And there's a lot of different branches coming from the different parts of the inner ear that all then fuse together and go into the brain. And then just two more. Number nine, the glossopharyngeal, which is the nerve of the first branchial arch, and you can see it coming out here. It's this one. Right here. And right here. And then a really big one behind that, which is the vagus, which is coming out here, and it's the nerve of all the remaining branchial arches, and then also going down to the gut. That's this one here. Okay, that was the quick tour, maybe not so quick.